So the doubts related to uh, the exercise work energy and power. The wind turbine has blade which sweep across an area of 25 uh, meter. The wind speed is there, uh, which is 12, and uh, the mass of the air which will pass, that is 7,500. Calculate the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equals to half mv square. You just have to multiply half with mass is 7,500, and the speed is 12, and then square. So this will give us the kinetic energy of the wind. which is 540,000 joules. The next the turbine convert 10% of the kinetic energy uh, of a wind into electrical energy. So 10% of the energies can state the equation, for, uh, state the electrical energy output. So the efficiency is a useful energy output or useful power output divided by total input times 100. Efficiency is convert only 10%. So this is 10. The useful output is electrical energy. The total input energy, which we calculated in the previous one, which was 540,000. So this was 540,000. and into 100. So we just simplify and work out energy. But the question is power. After working out the electrical energy, how to work out the power? Power is energy divided by time. So what energy we get, we will divide by time. If you read the question in the beginning, the first part, the time was in like one second. So if time is one second, like if I divide something by one, so it means the energy and the power will have the same value. Because time is equal to one second. So when I divide, I'll get the same answer. So 540,000 multiplied by 10 divided by 100, which will be 54,000 watts. Which This is 54,000 joules. But because we need the power, power is energy divided by time, and time is one second. So it will be 54,000 divided by one. So it is 54,000 joule per second. or what? The next part, another day, the wind speed is half. Calculate the mass of air. Basically here, the wind speed is affecting uh, the mass of air passing. If more air is passing, there is higher wind speed. If less wind is passing, that means lower wind. Uh, like uh, the speed of rotation will be half as well. Yeah, so idea is that, look, when the speed was 12 meter per second speed of the air. The mass which was passing was uh, 7,500. But now they're saying that the speed of the wind become half. It's like six meter per second. So how much mass will pass? So mass will also be half because like the idea is that the, 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 if the wind speed is more, greater number of the particles were moving. This was uh, 7,500 kilogram. But if the wind speed is half, what happened to the mass? It will also be half. So it will be 3,750 kilograms. So here, it's a one mark. You don't have to show calculation just right. Half of it, half of 7,500, which is 3,750. Then calculate the power output of a wind turbine on a second day as a fraction of the first day. So what we will do, like on day one, the we can work out the energy on day one and energy on day two. Like day one, the energy half, half mv square, because the time is one second. So if we take a ratio of energy, that will be same as ratio of the power. And day two, so what we can do, it will be half mv square. Day one, the mass was 7,500 and the speed was 12. Day two, it will be half. The mass is 3,750 and speed is also half. So it will be six square. So this will get, uh, this will be <clears throat> 540,000 joules. 
and this is how much? 3,756 square times 3,750 and then divided by two. What's the answer for in terms of energy? Yeah, what's the answer? Sixty-seven thousand five hundred. So this will be sixty-seven thousand five hundred joules. If we take a ratio, how to take a ratio? We divide by the smallest value. So we divided by smallest value six seven thousand five hundred and sixty-seven thousand five hundred. So ratio eight is to one. Like on day one, it was eight times the output power as compared to day two. Or we can also say one is to one by eight. Because like eight is to one is same as like one is to one by eight ratio. Is it a clear discussion? Yeah, fraction means ratio. And the next one is page number 18. The car of mass 900 kgs traveling at a constant speed of 30 meter per second against a resistive force of 200. So if, there, if it is moving at a constant speed, means there will be no resultant force. If there is no resultant force, the driving force equals to the resistive force. Calculate the kinetic energy. The mass is, so we can use half mv square. So it will be half The mass of the car is 900 and speed is 30. So it will be half 900 into 30. This will give us the energy of the car in joules, which is 405,000 joules. Then the next part, Calculate the energy used in one second against a resistive force. So how much energy, this is a kinetic energy, how much energy used against a resistive force in one second? So how, or how much work is done? Yeah, that's right. Because see, how much work is done against the resistive force? The work done is force into distance. The resistive force is given in the question 2000. But what about the distance? We have the formula speed is distance divided by time. Speed in the question is given 30. Distance we don't know in time they are asking in one second. So in that case, if it is divided by one, then one will be multiplied. The distance will be 30. So this will be 60 multiplied by 30. Uh, 2000 multiplied by 30, so 6 multiplied, 2 multiplied by 3, that's 6. And then three, four zeros are there, so 60,000 joules of energy is actually used against the resistive force. Or 60,000 joule is a work done against the resistive force. Then what is the minimum power that the engine has delivered to the wheel? And see, it's a one mark. So idea is that whenever time, yeah, that's right. Because whenever, as I mentioned, time is one second in that question, the energy and the power have the same value. So if it was using 60,000 joules uh, to work done against a resistive force, so how much power should be delivered? So it will be 60,000 divided by one. So 60,000 divided by one, we'll get 60,000, but the unit will change as a unit of the power is what? And the next part, what form of energy is in the fuel used by the engine to drive the car? It will have a chemical energy and state why the energy in the fuel is converted at a greater rate that you have calculated. Like we calculated that 60,000 60, joules should be converted 
we are calculating that 60,000 joules should be converted every second to drive this car at a constant speed. But in practical, it will be more. Why in practical, it will be more? It's not like the engine is only producing a kinetic energy. It has, it is producing heat energy. It is producing sound energy. So the total energy in practical or total power, which the engine produced will be much higher than what we have calculated. We have just calculated the power needed to move the car. But in practical, the engine will develop more power because it is wasting some of the energy. So or it is, there is also a power loss in the or energy loss in the form of heat, in the form of sound. Then page 20. Question 17, figure 3.1 shows a descent of a skydiver from a stationary balloon from 2,000 meter to 500 meter, and then he opens the parachute. Skydiver steps from a balloon at a height of 2,000 and accelerate downward. His speed is uh, 52 meter per second at a height of 500 meter. He would then open the parachute from 400 meter to the ground level. He falls at a constant speed. The total mass of a skydiver is 92. What We need a, a loss in gravitation, like how much energy he lost when it moved from 2000 to 500. So how much the height has changed? So what is the change in the height? So it is starting 2000 and then 500. So the change in height is 500 meter. And the loss in gravitational potential energy is given by a formula MGH. And M is the mass of a skydiver 92, gravity 9.8 or 10, and the height which he descend, that is because they did not ask like he lands on the ground. If the same question was there, like how much potential energy, change in potential energy as he lands on the ground, so the total change in height will be 2000. But they're only asking from 2000 meters to 500 meters, so change in height is 1500 meters. So we multiply them, we'll get the uh, gravitational potential energy, which is lost. That will be a large number because 92, 920 times 1,500. So it is 1.38 into 10 power 6 joules. The next part, we have to calculate the kinetic energy at 500. They mentioned the speed when you, the skydiver at 500 meter height. Power is not same as energy. Power is energy divided by time. But in the question, if time is one second, that time the power and energy are the same. Otherwise, it won't be. Power and energies are not always same. If time is one second in a question, that time the energy and the power have the same value. And work is same as energy. Whenever a work is done, energy either stored or transformed. So at 500, it was uh, moving at a speed of 52 meter per second. So we'll work out the kinetic energy by using a formula half mv square. So it will be half the mass of a skydiver 92 and the speed is 52 square. So when we multiply, we'll get the energy, which is 1.24 into the power 5. So you can see the loss. When he lost the energy, it is more than the speed at or the kinetic energy at this point. What is the reason for that? Like, when a skydiver jumps from 200 meter to 500 meters, the change in the potential energy, the, like he was having a potential energy of 1.38 into 10 power uh, 6 joules. And he he's having a kinetic energy of 1.244 into 10 power 5 joules. So why there is not the like loss in potential is not equal to gain in kinetic because some of the work is done or some of the energy is lost due to work done against the friction. And how we'll know how much work he did because the idea is that here he's having a potential. Some of the energies they're used to do a work done and remaining as a kinetic energy. So we can say potential energy is equals to kinetic energy plus work done. So if we need the work done, it will be potential minus the kinetic. If a question is what, how much work is done, against the resistive force, so it will be potential minus the kinetic. As there is some of the energy is lost due to air resistance. 
then the kinetic energy of 500 meter is not equal to loss in gravitational potential. Why? So uh, the same answer because some of the work is done against the air resistance. That's why loss in potential is not equal to gain in kinetic. Energy loss in the form of heat or sound. What happened to air resistance acting on the skydiver as he fall from? So when he is falling, because the speed is increasing, so air resistance will also increase. The value of the air resistance during the fall from 400 meter to the ground. So, because from 400 meter to the ground, he moved with a constant speed when object moved with a constant speed, falling with a constant speed. So, weight is equals to air resistance. So, when we work out the weight 92 into 10, it is 920 Newton. So, if the weight of the skydiver is 920 Newton, how much air resistance should act? That is also 920. That's why he will not excel like the resultant force is zero. He's moving at a terminal speed. 